Hey guys, Mystery Wheel Gunner back with you again. Don't worry, I have not lost my love for revolvers. Just making a brief detour into semi-auto land. All right, let's get to it. We've got the Dan Wesson Kodiak. <clears throat> Whoa, excuse me. Dan Wesson Kodiak in 10 millimeter. It comes in this pretty nice case. Let's open it up. And the inside of the case is uh, it's pretty nice as well. A lot of guns come today either, either in just a box or in one of those slab style cases but this one is actually nice and form to the contents inside and it's not just hard plastic it's this like kind of like this soft touch plastic which gives the, the contents you know a little bit of padding and, uh, and cushion uh, this pocket here that's where the instruction manual would be. It also comes with a nice uh, nice little sticker. It also came with one of those weird gun locks. You know, the one that looks like a tapeworm attached to a padlock. I don't know where mine went. I don't use it anyway. I doubt many people use those things. But yeah, it does come with one. I just don't have it handy uh, to show you. But anyway, let's get to the important stuff. The actual, you know, the good stuff. So it comes with two mags, one is in the compartment, one is already in the gun. Let me go ahead and take this opportunity to safety check it. Mag is empty. And the gun itself is empty. Okay, let's look at the mags first. The magazines are really high quality here. They've got, uh, you know, they've got the nice anti-tilt type follower. Okay, I mean, it, it tilts down just a slight bit, okay, if you push on the very, the very tip of it. But as you can see, it prevents the rounds from fully nosing down. So that's a pretty nice feature there. It has the, uh, the bumper pad on the bottom pretty nice size bumper pad it kind of needs it because uh, you've got a bit of a mag well here so when you insert the mags you know, it's nice to have uh, the bumper pad protrude a bit from the bottom so you can really you know seat it in there another, another nice thing is that uh, the bumper pad is made out of this nice thick rubber uh, you know, so it gives it a little bit of a padding there. Sometimes these are made up that made out of that hard plastic, but these are actually of a, of a rubber compound. It's screwed into the the floor plate or base plate, whatever they call these. Yeah, you can you can tell I'm real familiar with semi autos, right? <laughs> but anyways, they're, they're screwed in there. So when it's time to disassemble the magazine for cleaning and maintenance, you can unscrew. The bumper pad from the uh, the floor plate, and then slide the floor plate off uh, to give you access to the internal, so you can take these things apart, as opposed to doing it, you know, the old-fashioned way, uh, where you gotta, you know, push these down and insert something to compress the spring and that weird stuff. It's a lot easier just to uh, access it through a removable uh, floor plate. Okay, let's get on to. The gun itself. Uh, the Kodiak is available in two finishes. Uh, one is a, I believe, a monochromatic uh, version, it's just all black. Obviously, I got the one with the the dark frame and kind of this, uh, kind of like a bronze slide. Uh, as you can tell, it is a 1911, but not your not your standard 1911. This one has a six inch barrel as opposed to the more familiar five inch government model. Um, it also has a bull barrel. Yeah, it's a bushingless design. Oh, on a side note, you, you do get a bushing wrench. <laughs> um, they probably threw it in here out of a force of habit. And um, many of the Dan Wessons do have a, do use the traditional bushing design. Uh, the Kodiak does not have that, but you know, seeing as how many of their guns do have a bushing, I guess it's just common for the for the guy packing these guns to put uh, to put the bushing wrench in there. Whoops, bumped the camera a bit there. 
But anyway, yeah, you get one of these. Well, I don't know. Maybe you, maybe I just got lucky. But anyway, you don't use the, the bushing wrench on this gun. Okay, back to it. So, bushingless design, bull barrel. Also, as you can tell, it's got the short style guide rod. If it had the extended guide rod, you, you'd be able to see it right now. But it doesn't have that. So, pretty interesting combination. Many of the bull barrels I've seen actually have uh, the, the full length guide rod. But not on this one. Um, so you can see, yeah, there's really no way to access the plug from the outside. So yes, this has what's known as the reverse plug system. So on a standard 1911 or tra more traditional 1911, the plug is captured from the front by the bushing. This one is retained from the back via a flange on the on the cap and I'll show you that when I take apart the gun so they call it the reverse plug or sometimes the top hat style because uh, when I take this out you'll see it, it resembles well it kind of looks like a really really tall top hat with the flange and back being the the brim of the hat okay uh, it also has an ambi safety see there it's really nice and clicky this is the way the safeties should be I don't know what it is but uh, quite a few 1911s out there have have mushy safeties where you know uh, they're not all mushy so sometimes it'll be mushy when going into safe but nice and clicky when going into fire and some of them some of them have that weird over travel slop where even when it's in the even when it's fully down, you can push on it, and there's a little bit of slop there. Well, not on this gun. Okay, it's nice and clicky into safe, and nice and clicky into fire. No over travel slop. This is the way it should be. There is quite a, uh, I won't say quite a bit, but you can feel, uh, you know, there's a good bit of resistance on the safety. It's, it's not, it's not a light safety. It's, it's, it's a little on the heavy side. To be honest, I kind of like that. Okay, Ooh, let me look at my cheat sheet here. What am I going to talk about next? Let's, let's talk about the grips. Really nice uh, texturing on these grips. There's enough, there's enough texturing on there to give you a good grip, but not enough so that it feels abrasive. They, they found a nice, uh, nice happy medium there. They're also a uh, thin style. I wasn't sure if I would like the thin style grips. Um, when I'm shooting my revolvers, I like uh, you know I like I like I like a fatter grip. So I wasn't sure if I'd be liking these, but you know what? <laughs> these feel really nice in a 1911. So yeah, kind of weird, huh? On a revolver, I like the fat grips, but on a 1911, I'm really learning to like these uh, these thin style grips. Uh, there's also a good amount of checkering on the front and on the back. So you can see it has the, the nice extended uh, beaver tail grip safety. It's got the, uh, I don't know what they call this, the, the lightened hammer or a combat style hammer. Skeletonized is another term I've heard. Not sure what the correct term is, but you can see it's got the, you know, it's not the spur type on the uh, on the older ones. It's more of a more more of the modern type hammer. On the sights, you've got a uh, red uh, red insert fiber optic for the front sight. A blacked out rear sight that is fully adjustable for windage and elevation. Okay, time for the. Uh, the trigger snobbery okay and we are empty oh man probably one of the best 1911 triggers I've ever felt um, it's a little bit difficult to describe because uh, well the the ideal 
1911 trigger or any trigger is often described as a uh, imagine a glass rod being broken by your finger you know you need you, you want a light crisp break and this gun has that but imagine that glass rod uh, wrapped in a very fine layer of velvet so now don't get me wrong I'm not trying to describe it as spongy it is not spongy it, it has got a very clean break to it So there, there's a the little bit of take up and then, oh, it's right there. And it is light and it is crisp. So just a little bit of take up and then, bing, oh man. So again, it, it's a very luxurious feeling trigger. It doesn't even feel like a trigger break. It's more like, it's more like you're pulling the trigger into a notch. You know, sometimes on some triggers you get that, you know, I don't know, that light clack feel when it breaks. This one doesn't have that. Again, it's light and it is clean with the brake, just with just the, with a just a tad of softness. Very nicely done uh, by by Dan Wesson. Oh, before I forget, let me just uh, go back to the magazines here. Uh, these have a convex follower. Kind of interesting. Uh, I've seen 1911 magazines with, uh, you know, a flat follower, flat follower with a dimple, flat follower with a with a little ridge in the middle, and I've seen the the concave or scalloped followers. This is the first time I've seen a convex follower. You know, they're, they're rounded. Pretty interesting. They, they work well, so, you know, uh, apparently there's some kind of benefit to the, uh, uh, to the rounded followers. I wonder if these are used only on the 10 millimeters. Um, I'm not a 1911 aficionado. I mean, I've owned a few, but I wouldn't call myself an aficionado or a collector of them. But I've never seen the rounded ones uh, on, on the 45s, you know. Chambered in 45, I never see, never seen that. But anyway, just wanted to point that out. Kind of neat. And oh yeah, forgot to mention the Kodiak does have an accessory rail, so you can add things like lights, lasers, tanks, Pikachu, whatever. And yeah, I remembered about the accessory rail, so I could throw in those corny jokes. Okay, time to demonstrate disassembly of the Kodiak. I put the mag back in so I could, you know, do the whole thing. <laughs> so always remember, mag out first. Make sure that's empty. I'll set that aside. Check the gun. Chamber is empty. Okay. Um, like I said before, no bushing. <laughs> and... because it's got the short style guide rod. Uh, yeah, no way to relieve that spring tension. So yeah, you gotta take this apart while, while fighting against the, uh, the recoil spring. So bring it back to the takedown notch, just like on a, you know, on any other 1911, except this time you're doing it while under tension then pull the slide stop plus you know it's like a two and one slide stop plus retaining pin and then the slide just comes right off just like on any other 1911. now remember this is all under tension and it's not a captive spring. So when you pop this guide rod out, make sure you've got it captured or else it will fly across the room. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I 
come on out of there. Sorry, it's a little difficult to do this while I've, the camera is literally in my way, but it's the only way I can film it like this. But there we go. All right. Uh, it kind of, uh, the spring clips into uh, like a little ridge or something there, but it's not fully captive because you can easily separate the shorty rod from the, uh, from the recoil spring. But when you put it to get back together, you can feel where it uh, snaps into place. But uh, again, it's not enough to capture it. So if you're not careful, yes, these things will fly apart. Okay, and here's the plug. Here's the cap right there. As you can see, see that flange? That is what retains it. So it's not captured from the front. It's captured from the rear. And all you do is just pop that out. Of course, you're going to have trouble with it now. <laughs> there we go. And now that comes. And you can see why some people call it the, the top hat. Because, yeah, it kind of resembles a really tall hat with the flange. Uh, being the, the brim and the barrel uh, comes out like on any other 1911 make sure you've got the little link pin here forward and then it just slides oh come on unlock there we go and it just slides out the front I'm not going to take it fully out because I'm going to put it right back in. And yes, <laughs> the barrel is glistening because, yeah, I like to run my 1911s eh, a little on the wet side. Doesn't hurt them. You know, whatever the 1911 doesn't want, it's going to spit out the first time you shoot it anyway. So you know, ne never worry about over lubing a, a 1911. Whatever it doesn't want, <laughs> it will eject forcefully probably within the first two shots okay and then whatever's left you know, just fine okay so make sure the i'm not sure if the link pin should be up or down when putting the top hat back in but that's the next step forgive me if i'm fumbling here uh, i don't own too many 1911s and this is the only one i own with the top hat style system Maybe that leg pin should be down. Yeah, there we go. Seems a little easier to line it up. There we go. <laughs> All right. And now for the really fun part. I might have to cut away here if I can't get this done on camera. So you got to put this in, right? Uh, and you got to fight the spring all the way through. Yeah, fun times. Uh, this is the only thing I really don't like about this gun. I love the gun. I really do. But, oh, this part. If I, anybody knows any kind of hack to, to do this easier, let me know. Because I, I really don't like this part. You know what? I'm just going to do this off camera. <laughs> it's already difficult for me to do and even more difficult when I got the, the camera in the way. Okay, through the magic of editing, <laughs> here it is. Back together. There's only one way it can go in. So, you know, but just make sure the, uh, you know, the cutout on this part is contacting the barrel. If you don't, if, if it's not doing that, there's no way you can get this in there anyway. But one thing to look for to make sure of, make sure that link pin, okay, can settle into that notch there. See that? Just make sure it's lined up so that can that can settle into there. And that's the most difficult part because you got to compress the spring while you're lining it up. Uh, not fun. Again, if anybody knows a life hack to get that in there easier. Now let me know. Otherwise, it's just, you know, I'm just going to have to get used to it, you know, 
the more I take this apart to clean it, uh, I suppose the easier that will be. But okay, then all I do is put it back onto the frame. A tad bit more difficult than on a traditional 1911 because uh, you know you gotta do this. Sorry, <laughs> I know I'm looking like a klutz here because I got the camera in the way. Okay, there we go. All right, and you slide it in, and you gotta take it. Uh, whoops. Uh, yeah, can you tell? I'm not really a semi-auto guy. Okay, make sure make sure that link pin is in this down position. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, having trouble keeping some of the things in frame. I'm literally using the camera as my eye. And you got to line this up. You know what? I'm going to have to cut away again. It's just a lot easier for me to do this without having to mind the camera. Okay, I got the difficult part done. <laughs> got it. Uh, got the uh, slide stop pin pushed through the little link pin on, on the inside. After you get that part done, just a matter of bringing it back once again to the little takedown notch. And... Here's where you gotta you gotta lift up on it just a little bit. You don't wanna you don't wanna scrape it along the side of the side of your frame, or else you get that you know, so-called idiot scratch. So you know, lift it up just a little bit so it clears the frame. Get it to the takedown notch, and then just push it down. And there you go. It's all back together, and you don't get the idiot scratch. We don't want that. Do the basic function check on a 1911. Okay, hammer cocked back. Push it into safe. You should not be able to pull the trigger. Put it into fire, but take your hand off the grip safety and it still should not be able to fire. Put your hand back on the grip safety, full purchase on the gun. Again, obviously we're empty, and now you should be able to drop the hammer. Okay, successful test. And there you have it, a brief overview of the Dan Weston Kodiak in 10 millimeter. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Hey guys, Mystery Wheel Gunner here. Did you know I created my own video game? Yep, I created Big Tire Adventures, a game where you control a big tire as you run over and smash through things. And it's only a dollar, so what have you got to lose? Check the link in the description below to get your own copy of Big Tire Adventures.